हे गाइस दिस द वैन आई एम बैक विद अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ प्लम्स अ फ्री यूपीएससी सीरीज प्रीलिम्स लेवल अप एमसीक्यू सीरीज सो दिस इज टू मेक श्योर दैट यू गाइस आर प्रैक्टिसिंग द राइट वे एंड यू आर कंसिस्टेंट विद योर प्रिपरेशन सो एवरी डे वी कम अप विद फाइव न्यू एम सी क्यूज एट नाइन पी एम एंड आई होप यू गाइज आर यू नो कंसिस्टेंट एंड आर यू नो कमिंग डेली टू दिस सेशन अटेंडिंग दिस सेशन बिकॉज कंसिस्टेंसी इज द की गाइज एंड इफ यू हैवेंट press the bell notification please do that uh, if you don't want to miss an update we are coming with so many uh, you know video series which you don't want to miss and also um uh, don't know be be consistent uh, with the preparation guys because it is very crucial time now there is very less uh, very less time available uh, with you so please practice hard right now let's get started so the first question is in order to uh, to be you know recognized as a biodiversity hotspot a region must meet which of the following criteria so what is the criteria for you know a region if it is it is to be called a biodiversity your uh, options are uh, you know vegetation density uh, endemism species richness and threat perception so the options from which you have to choose are the combination of one and three only second two uh, two and three only two and four only or D two three and four, right? So hope you guys will answer this. So pause the video, answer the question, and do write your scores, everything in your um you know comment section, so that we know you know how uh, how you guys are doing, and even you know how others are doing. So the answer is D actually. In order to call classified as qualify as a biodiversity hotspot, a region must meet mainly two. There are two strict criteria. first of all it must have at least 1500 vascular plants as endemics right uh, which is to say that it has a high percentage of plant life found uh, right then uh, there is and this hotspot is is irre irreplaceable right and then it must have 30% of its original national um, sorry natural vegetation it should have um, it must have lost its you know uh, here the word lost is missing it must have lost 30% of its original natural natural vegetation so it should be threatened as well so threat perception also comes under this right so and species richness is also one of the criteria and then um, endemism endemism is also very important to be required uh, to qualify as a um, biodiversity hotspot now the second mcq so equus hermio hermionus khar right so this is the name it is also known as indian onanger so this is currently listed as the near threatened species by iucn so which is the species we are we are talking about here how it is you know uh, widely known what is the name which is known properly i'm sorry popularly your options are indian wild buffalo indian gazelle indian wild ass or indian wild boar so pause the video guys and answer the question answer is c so indian wild ass is also known as equus hermionus khar right and it is all uh, another name is also indian onanger and in local gujarati language it is uh, ghudkhur or khur it is a subspecies of onanger native to the south asia it is currently listed as the uh, near threatened species by iucn moving on to the next question third mcq of today so discharge of nutrients run off from land upwelling in the seas so these are some criteria right um, these these are some of the contribution uh, uh, sorry these are some of the conditions so in the sea when this all these things happen in the water bodies these are the contributing factors of, of for which of the following phenomena right so i think i have uh, you know discussed this very widely in my environment lectures so those who are for, those who have followed my lectures definitely they'll be able to answer this or those who have read the shankara's all right so options are bioremediation starvation of roots decay of organic matter or algal bloom right now let's answer let's see the answer now answer is d algal blooms right so these um, you know the characteristics which had which has been um, listed out in the slide previous slide other characteristics of algal blooms right so it occurs when colonies you know start combining rapidly when conditions such as nutrient concentrations right salinity and 
temperature are optimal and this all uh, algal blooms can be uh, can be you know formed due to a number of reasons and two main reasons are nutrient enrichment and warm water that it is facilitated by uh, facilitated by you know this surface runoff discharge of nutrients then there is nutrient enrichment of uh, water especially phosphates nitro uh, and nitrogen it is often you know result of the pollution that can uh, that can cause algal blooms and also water temperature is also said to have you know been it is also been related to the algal blooms and this is also uh, one of the environmental hazards we have learnt about it right over the time so now moving on fourth question the formation of ozone hole in the antarctic region antarctic region right it is more pro, uh, predominant than in the arctic region so you must be uh, um, you know again in my lectures i have explained this and discussed this widely so this is the uh, one of the you know problems uh, the ozone hole depletion uh, ozone depletion is actually much more in the antarctic region than in the arctic region so options which are given some of the you know uh, statements which are given let, let us see uh, the first one is antarctic stratosphere is much colder second one is formation of uh, pscs right uh, that is polar stratospheric uh, clouds and then there is longevity of the antarctic vortex and there is increased uh, temperature at polar region due to global warming so you have to choose the correct combination of these uh, you know options so first uh, if it is you know you have to answer if it is 1 and 3 only or 2 and 3 2 3 4 only 1 2 3 and 4 means all of the above or 1 2 3 only so answer is actually d right 1 2 and 3 so the fourth option is wrong so antarctic stratosphere is actually much colder and that's why it is contributing more to the problem that is ozone, ozone hole deple uh, ozone depletion right uh, the ozone it absorbs sunlight right and it uh, it causes the increase in temperature in the altitude uh, right in the altitude if this ozone is being depleted the air becomes much you know cooler and further it adds to the favorable conditions for the formation of pscs this all I have discussed in very much detail in my ozone depletion chapter uh, lecture right so then there is formation of uh, these pscs polar uh, polar stratospheric clouds and then there is the stabilization of vortex as well and the low temperature it enables the formation of this uh, these clouds below 20 uh, 20 kilometers then also there is longevity of the this uh, antarctic vortex right and because of this the ozone depletion is much more uh, faster I mean, it is uh, it takes uh, happens more in the antarctic region now the final mcq let us see so uh, there is a species which are which is being discussed here about which it is said that it is hunted for its under fur it is known as shatush and this species is nat native to northeastern uh, tibetan plateau so which species are we talking about here your options are otter chiru oryx and chinkara also known as gazelle so answer the question guys it is b that is the tibetan uh, antelope or chiru it is right scientific name is pontholops uh, hot uh, hot gonsoni okay it is bovid nature bovid native to the northeastern tibetan plateau and some scattered across india and bhutan also in the higher altitudes right and hill plateau and mountain valley as well they are actually hunted for its very extremely you know smooth uh, soft light and warm under fur and which is obtained after its death that's why and that is called shaitush it is uh, used to weave the uh, luxury shawls so i hope you guys uh, you know attend this attended this uh, session and liked it so if you did please uh, you know press like and share these videos as much as you can thank you so much we'll meet in the next one